What's up, y'all? This is Justin, and today I've got a different type of video for you. Uh, as you all know, about three weeks ago, I bikepacked the entire CNO Canal towpath and the Great Allegheny Passage, which combined makes a 333.5 mile route from DC to Pittsburgh. And so today I thought I would take you through all of my gear and show you how exactly I uh, fitted everything to my bike, show you what I packed, what I used along the trip, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's get started. Starting off with the bike itself, I own a Diamondback Hanjo 3 gravel bike. Now this is the 2020 model, which I purchased at the beginning of this year. And Diamondback does have it listed on their website that they'll be making the 2021 version available for purchase this summer. Sitting at just under $1,200, I personally think this is a great entry-level gravel bike. It weighs in at about 24 pounds and features a 9-speed drivetrain, an aluminum frame and fork, flat mount disc brakes, and pretty large tire clearance, accommodating tires as big as 700 by 45 millimeters. Now, in my experience so far, this bike handles pavement, dirt, and gravel trails pretty well, making it a suitable option for both daily commutes and longer bike packing trips that might involve pedaling on various terrain. It also offers quite a few options for mounting things to the bike itself, which, as you can see, I took full advantage of. Now, I will do my best to link everything I'm about to talk about in the description box below. So if you're interested in picking up any gear for yourself, you can find everything there. And without further ado, let's get into this gear roundup. So before I actually start going through everything, I thought I would first give you a closer look at my bikepacking setup. Now with me being brand new to bikepacking, I spent a lot of time looking at other people's setups and just getting a feel for what others were carrying as well as the types of bags they were using to store everything. And this is what I settled on for myself. So starting in the front, I have a larger front handlebar bag, as well as these two smaller stem bags, which I call my snack bags, and you'll figure out why as I begin to unpack everything. Uh, moving over to the center of the bike, also known as the frame, I managed to mount two top tube bags, and then I have a full frame bag, which pretty much takes up this entire center space. Moving over to the front wheel, I have two more bags mounted to the fork, and I'm actually really glad I decided to pick up these bags because they provided so much additional storage space, which I was really happy to have. And lastly, in the back, I have a larger seat bag, and that pretty much rounds up all the bags that I used on this trip. And just to highlight a few smaller items which I mounted to the bike itself, in the back I have a bike light, also attached to the frame are a portable pump and a water bottle underneath. And up on the handlebars, I have my Garmin Edge Explorer GPS device, as well as a headlight for night riding. Okay, now that you've had a look at my setup, I'll go through each bag and show you what lives where. But before I continue, I just want to make the disclaimer that this is the setup that worked for me and this is what I was comfortable carrying. And with that being said, everything that worked for me might not work for you, so you should ultimately decide for yourself how much or how little gear you need. I might also recommend practicing fixing everything to your bike a few times before any trip, just to make sure that you feel comfortable with where everything lives and how you might get to the things that you need. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing I didn't do that I wish I would have done, so it's definitely a recommendation of mine. So first up, we've got my Rock Bros handlebar bag, which I picked up from Amazon. And for the record, yes, most of my gear I got off Amazon, and I'm not mad about it one bit because it all held up great. Now, the main thing I like about this bag is that it has roll-down closures on both sides, giving you the flexibility to adjust the capacity anywhere from 7 to 14 liters. It's also listed as waterproof, but I'll add that after a night of consistent downpour, I did notice the inside of the bag was a little wet, so it may have been smart for me to line it with a trash bag or something. Lastly, I appreciated these elastic cords on the outside of the bag, which I used to attach my tent poles, my iPhone tripod, as well as my wet rain gear when needed. 
You'll want to make sure your handlebars are at least 40 centimeters apart in order for this bag to fit between them without interfering with your gears or brakes. I mainly used this bag to store my clothes, which I kept in this Diddy bag from REI. So starting from the left, I have my sun hoodie from Amazon and a pair of Endura padded cycling shorts. Uh, these two items I actually wore every day, so they were never in my handlebar bag at any time. But for the purpose of this video, I just decided to include them here. Uh, in the middle, I have a couple of extra layers, which I used on those chillier mornings and also on those days where it was just windy and a little bit colder. So I had this heavier flannel shirt from Dakine, which I often threw over top of my sun hoodie and a pair of lightweight tights from REI. On the far right, I have a beanie that I slept in, my rain gear, just one pair of underwear, which I wore the entire time, uh, two pairs of darn tough socks to ride in, and one pair of thicker smart wool socks to sleep in. I also forgot to include my helmet, cycling shoes, and baseball cap, which you probably saw in my vlogs, so I'll just include links to those down in the description box. But uh, that was really all I needed as far as clothes go, and I had a little extra room in my handlebar bag, which I just used to store extra food and snacks. Next we have my STEM bags, and the one word I'll use to describe the purpose of these bags is fuel. Now, I don't know if you know, but pushing a 60 pound bike anywhere from 65 to 80 miles a day takes a lot out of you. And I quickly found that I needed to shove something in my mouth every few miles. So these bags just made it so much easier getting to my snacks so that I could eat as often as I needed to. On the left side, I kept a second water bottle and also some noon energy tablets. Uh, in the front pocket, I had an extra pair of gloves and I decided to carry both full fingered and fingerless cycling gloves because I knew temperatures might fluctuate. And so it was just great to have the option to be able to swap them out where I needed to. And then I just attached some hand sanitizer to the outside. On the right side, I pretty much just kept it filled with snacks the entire time, as well as more energy supplements. So I could easily reach for bars, peanut butter packets, gels, and chews. And the great part was I didn't necessarily have to stop every time I wanted to eat on a little something. I could just grab it as I continued pedaling. Uh, I also kept a map of the entire CNO and Gap Trail in that bag so that I could easily reference it throughout the day. And so I always knew where I was, I always knew what was ahead of me, and where I could stop. Here we have my two top two bags, and as I was looking through other cyclist setups, I noticed that most will only use one top two bag. Uh, I managed to justify carrying two, and I'm not mad about it. Uh, with both bags being different shapes and different sizes, I found that I was able to fit different things into each of them. For instance, in the first bag, I kept a little Ziploc bag with my electronics as well as essential personal items. So things like my two anchor portable battery packs, charging cables, and a wall plug. I also had things like my keys, inhaler, a mask, and this little DCF drawstring wallet from z -Packs. Lastly, I threw in my Crank Brothers multi-tool just to have it handy in case I needed to tighten a few screws. This bag also features a compartment to hold your phone and a high sensitivity touchscreen. So I was able to record the different legs of my trip on the Strava app and I could easily check my progress throughout the day. So I thought that was pretty great. In the second bag, I stored all of my gear specifically for bike maintenance. And I'm a pretty organized person in everyday life. So I found comfort knowing that this stuff had its own space separate from everything else. And some of these tools are pretty small, as you can see, so it saved me the hassle of having to dig through my larger bags in the case that I needed to fix something. Items like chain lube, tire levers, a couple of tire boots, a spare tube, a patch kit, extra master chain links, and my spoke tool lived in this bag. So now we have my two restrap fork bags, and these were actually the only bags that I did not purchase off Amazon. 
Uh, I was able to find both of these bags and the cages to mount them to my bike on Backcountry's website. And I was so glad to have these because they gave me five extra liters of storage space each. So as I was sort of alluding to, I was able to store quite a few items in these bags. Uh, on the left side, you'll see that one bag was just large enough to hold my tent. Uh, I've been using the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL210 for a few years now, and I was also able to throw in a bike lock in the same bag with her. On the right side, I was able to squeeze a lot more smaller items into that bag. Um, I used the red and yellow REI Diddy bags to hold a lot of this stuff. But you'll see things like my tent stakes, my cook pot, uh, some fuel, uh, wilderness wipes to clean up at the end of the day, uh, personal items like my trowel and backcountry bidet, as well as my toothbrush and toothpaste. Uh, I won't necessarily go through everything here because it's a lot, but as I said before, you can find everything down in the, in the description box. But one thing I will stress is shave cream. Make sure you get yourself some chafe cream if you are going on any long distance bike packing or bike touring trip. Uh, the black tube that you see next to the sunscreen was my chafe cream and I used it liberally to say the least. And I definitely needed it. It came in handy and it kept me from crying in the saddle with a sore bum the entire time. Just really quickly, I also wanted to show you these cages that need to be purchased separately in order to mount your bags to the front fork. Um, I purchased these off of Backcountry's website also. And uh, just to note, my fork only offers one mount attachment point as opposed to two, which this cage requires. So I had to get a little creative and I actually use zip ties to uh, keep the mount in place. So as you can see, uh, I use a zip tie on the top and also towards the bottom, just so the cage would not rotate as I was riding. All right, moving on to my frame bag, which was another Amazon purchase. Now I had to do a little measuring before I bought this bag to ensure that it would actually fit perfectly in my frame. Uh, thankfully it does, so I'm very happy with it. And uh, this bag was actually the heaviest, although it contained the fewest amount of items because it contained my food bag with most of my food, as well as my Katadyne Be Free water filter. So uh, I packed those two things in this bag. And also this bag has a nice side pocket where I kept some extra zip ties, a couple of extra spokes, which I picked up from my local bike shop and also my titanium spork for easy access and finally i just have some gorilla tape and luco tape wrapped around this green thingy which i managed to tie around one of the straps and finally we have made it to my topeak 15 liter seat bag uh, you guessed it another amazon purchase and uh, before we can go inside, I need to show you all the things that I managed to adhere to the outside of the bag. So on one side, I just have a camp mug and a microfiber towel. And on the other side, I managed to use a voile strap to adhere another water bottle cage to the outside of the bag. Uh, originally, I had a second voile strap, which I used to hold the top half of the water bottle in place. Uh, somewhere along the way, I lost that strap, so I ended up using the strap to my Tiva sandal to sort of hold it in place. So uh, there's some creative thinking for you. Now inside my seat bag, there is another uh, waterproof roll top bag. And inside of that bag, I have my Enlightened Equipment 20 Degree Revelation Quilt my Thermarest Neo Air x Light sleeping pad, my Patagonia Nano Puff jacket, and also my camp pillow, as well as a buff, which I sort of use as a pillowcase. And then I also managed to stuff my z pack sit pad in there. So uh, that's pretty much all that I have. All right, so that's pretty much going to do it for this gear roundup. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you find some value in this video. Uh, if you have any other questions about any of the gear that I used or my bikepacking setup, 
feel free to ask me down in the comments or you can also hit me up on Instagram at Trailhead Justin. Uh, I do respond to DMs as long as they're friendly. But uh, that pretty much wraps it up. So I'll see you all at the next Trailhead. Peace.